Hey guys, today I thought I'd share with you um, another group of my helmets. Uh, most of you guys that watch me know I love helmets. I'm a big helmet collector. I'm always trying to add more to my collection. And uh, today I thought I'd put together uh, a video showing you my World War II Schluter made uh, M1 helmets. Now, uh, some of you might know this, some of you might not, but um, during World War II, the United States produced about 22 million M1 helmets. And approximately 20 million were made by McCord, and about 2 million were made by Schluter. And so if you do the math, for every about 10 McCords made, there was basically only one Schluter made. And so the Schluter helmets are, you know, definitely uh, really desirable because they're not you know, they're not as common as the McCords. Um, you can still find them out there, you know, sometimes, but um, you'll definitely find a lot more McCords. Um, but I just want to give you a little bit of information about them, you know, and then I'll, I'll bring you in closer and, and show you each one. Um, uh, McCord started, you know, making M1 helmets around the end of Ju uh, June, first part of July in 1941. And uh, Schluter, they didn't start until January of 1943. So they were only produced from January 43 to, you know, towards the end of World War II. I think it was around July or August or so they stopped production uh, on the M1s. And uh, most of you might know that the McCord helmets, uh, the heat stamp went all the way up to about 1300 by the end of World War II. Whereas the Schluter heat stamps never hit the 600 mark. I've never seen in pictures or anything a 600 or higher heat stamp on the Schluters. They stopped, I think, in like the 570s or 580s or so. And so um, they're definitely, like I said, more desirable, you know. So definitely um, keep an eye out for them. Um, another thing about the Schluter helmets compared to McCord. McCord had like a taller profile uh, to the helmet. Like the dome like uh, that was taller and everything. Whereas the Schluters had kind of a, a shorter profile on them. Um, the Schluters also had a taller heat stamp. You know, on the inside of your helmet, uh, the numbers and the letter, you know, which followed would be taller than if you had a McCord helmet and a Schluter. If you looked at them at the same time, you would see the numbers are taller. They're bigger numbers. And they're really like a different font also than the McCord. And then um, on top of that, the Schluters, they stamped their helmet with a letter S underneath the heat stamp. Now, a lot of times the heat stamp, the letter S, uh, could be faded really bad or completely, the S could be gone altogether, just lightly stamped. Uh, could have been painted over, you know, but um, uh, they definitely put them on their helmets. Just want to share that with you. Um, and as far as the, the Schluter helmets, the ones that are really desirable are the front seam fixed bell because, you know, around 19, uh, October 1943, somewhere in that range, uh, the, the military started replacing the fixed bell with the swivel bell. And so if you could find, uh, you know, an original front seam fixed bell and with the original chin straps, then, um, you know, that's, that's a good thing. Um, that's definitely kind of a premium there for you as far as value. Um, now, I've got a total of uh, nine Schluter helmets. I've got 43 McCords, but I have nine Schluters, and uh, I'm going to share them with you today. And of the nine, I actually have two of the front seam fixed bell with the original chin straps. And, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things you just got to be at the right place at the right time, you know. And... Um, even though I don't have just a whole lot of Schluters, like I said, I've got 43 McCords and nine Schluters. I, um, all of these just about have something really interesting about them. So I've got a great variety of Schluter helmets here, you know, with different things to show y'all. And I'm really excited. And so I'm going to bring you in closer and I'll tell you more and show you more of each helmet. Okay, so here are my nine Schluter helmets. Um... I'm always looking to add more of these to the collection. Like I said, they're not very common at all. Um, but like I said, each one of these, or just about every one of these, has something unique about them. And I'm really excited to have them in the collection. I'll start up here. This one was the very first one that I ever got. Uh, this one 
is actually the earliest made one that I've ever that I, I've ever owned. You know that I have, which I've never gotten rid of any. But this one you see is a front seam, and this one is a fixed bell. And you see it's got the you know the khaki or tan OD3 uh, chin strap. It's original, never been replaced or anything. And uh, the heat stamp on this one, I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not, but it's right right in there. It's 119A, and then I don't know if you can see it, but there's the letter S right there. You can see most of the top of the S. So this would be, you know, um, earlier in the production. I got this one for $10 at a yard sale. Maybe about 15-minute drive from my house. 10 bucks, right place at the right time, you know. And so that's definitely a desirable helmet, like I said, with the front seam and original chin straps, fixed bell. This one right here I got uh, October of last year with, you know, I went on a great military pick, this man's house, and I got a ton of helmets and stuff. Uh, this one has been, appears to be refinished probably during Vietnam era, I would guess, because see, it's got here on the inside, it's got the Vietnam era chin strap set up. This one uh, is a front seam which is kind of painted over, but the same is there. And it's a swivel bell. And this one is 123A. And then see, there's your S right there. I had to remove the paint so I could see it. it was 123A and S. So this one would have originally been a fixed bell, but it was, you know, converted. It was changed and modified. Um, this one here, I think I paid, I paid $20 for this one. So that's still a good deal. Moving on here, I got this one at an antique store. I got an antique store, and see it's got the MP in red on there. I have no idea if that was done during World War II or Korea, Vietnam. I have no idea, but, you know, military police there. Um, and it also came with this original World War II liner. And take a look at this. This one is also a front seam, and it's got the, the fixed bells on there, the original chin strap. See, got the OD3 on there, and uh, this one, it actually has part of a laundry number, it looks like, but it's kind of hard to make out. The liner's not in the best of shape, you know, I mean, it's it's definitely World War II, and it's a mine safety appliance liner, MSA. Uh, this one I paid uh, $52, taxing everything at the uh, antique store. I'm sorry, but I don't know why my phone keeps stopping and doing this, acting goofy, but anyway, so 52 bucks with the liner and everything, that's still not a bad deal on that one. Oh, let me tell you, the heat stamp on that one was 192A, so I'm not sure, if, well, yeah, that one's still a fixed bell, so you know, what I was going to say is I'm not sure on the Schluter's roughly the heat stamp range of when they started you know, producing the swivel bell, I'm not sure, so it's definitely would be after one uh, 192A. Moving on here, got this one. This one's been in two or three videos already. Uh, this one I got off eBay, and um, see it's got the third infantry. Now there's been a you know a lot of people going back and forth whether or not you know this is World War II decal or Korea. Uh, I've seen pictures where they started with the bigger decals in 1945, so this could be a very late World War II decal or it could be korean war i honestly don't know um but um it's still a um, really cool thing on there and this one you see it's got battle damaged battle damage on it you see it's been hit with looks like shrapnel and i mean it could be you could have been hit with a bullet or two but it's definitely uh took a beating there uh both bells broke off no no chin strap or anything and uh, you see, this one's 275A, and there, see, there's your S right there. There's your S for Schluter. So that's a really neat piece. Moving on here, uh, I got this one. Let's see. Uh, is this the one? Bear with me. No. Okay, anyway, so I got this one here. This one I got off eBay. I don't know why my phone keeps doing that. I'm sorry, it's acting stupid. Um... This one I got on eBay, and take a look there. This one's been in two or three videos already. It's got a bullet graze on there. You can see that right there. I'm trying to angle it. It's definitely been hit by a bullet. You know, it's been grazed, so that's really neat. 
uh, piece there. This one, a uh, front seam, a uh, swivel bell. It's got a World War II liner on the inside. It's another MSA Mine Safety Appliance liner. Uh, the heat stamp on this one is 281A. And uh, it's overall in really good shape. Like I said, it's still a front seam. And uh, this one I paid... I think shipping and everything was $53 with the liner, so that's a good deal, I think, on that one. Moving on here, this one is, it's another front seam, a uh, swivel bell, no liner, but uh, this one, uh, see, it's got the darker OD7 chin strap on there. It's not the OD3, the khaki, this is the greenish. Um, this one, the heat stamp is 353A. It's kind of hard to see some of the numbers for you. See, there's your S. And see, this one has says water reject. You know, this has been in a couple other videos. You know, they could have found something with the heat pressure or temperature or whatever, but they rejected it for actually war use. Um, and what's really cool about this one is, you see, it's got specks of paint and stuff on there. And take a look at this. It's got a, it looks like a 196, if I'm not mistaken. Not sure what it looks like right there in paint 196. I'm not sure exactly what that would mean. I don't know if it's a you know a regiment or infantry or I don't know what it is, but still really cool to see that one. Like I said, 196 it appears to be on there. But um, this one I paid 38 dollars at an antique store, which I don't think is too bad, you know. This one right here is really neat. I got this one at a military uh, show. Um, and uh, it's in basically relic condition. It's a front seam swivel bell. But um, it does have what's left of the chin strap. Which, see, it's about falling off. And it's missing the, the buckle part on this end. But take a look at this. It has, this is a somewhat rare and desirable liner. This one is a St. Clair. Let me see. Show you. Bear with me. Down in there. Well, I'm trying. There you go. It's got a S, a yellow S C. I know you can't see it the best. For Saint Clair, it's a low pressure helmet liner, which are very desirable. You know they didn't hold up very well in the early stages of World War II, and they went to the high uh, high pressure. See, it's got the staff sergeant decal on the front, and it's got the stripe which uh, I believe would be for like a forward observer or something like that. It had a name on there, but somebody scratched it out. But that's kind of a shame. But it says front seam swivel bell. And um, the heat stamp on this one is 392A. I was able to uncover some of it. The 2A is kind of hard to see, but it's there. 392A with the very desirable liner. And, uh, you know, it took me a good while to get this liner out of here. So I guarantee you that this liner and helmet, excuse me, have been together since World War II. No doubt about it. They've been together. Um, and I paid uh, $40 for this setup, which was a good deal, even though the helmet's in relic condition. Moving on here, I've got this other really cool uh, Schluter. Now, this one is a rear seam swivel bell, uh, no chin strap or anything. And uh, it came with this, actually, a, a Korean War liner there, but um, the heat stamp on this one is 468A. See, there's an S for Schluter, 468A. Like I said, again, I apologize. My phone keeps stopping and freezing up. I don't know why it's doing that, but 468A. Um, it's really nice uh, little patina on the outside there. This one, I can't remember exactly where I got it. It might have been eBay or something, but paid $15 for this one, which was a good deal. And lastly, I've got this other one here. This is a, a rear seam swivel bell. And uh, it's got a, came with a Vietnam era uh, liner right in there. Um, this one, the heat stamp is four, I mean, I'm sorry, five, let me see, I wrote on here, 517A. And it's got the, the S, which is kind of oh, right there, if you can see it. It's 517A, and it's got the name Schuller or Schuller in there. I'm not sure, but overall, this one's in really good shape, I believe. Um, this one I paid $45 for, and um, 
I think I got a pretty good deal. This one I actually got at a, a flea market. So I got this one at a flea market. But um, so anyway, so out of my nine Schluter helmets, I've got seven seven front seam and two rear seam, um, which I think, you know, it's really cool. Like I said, always trying to add more to my collection. Like I said, as you can see, there's a there's something unique with just about every one of these. So I've got a nice variety of them in my collection. Always going to be looking for more and hopefully adding more. But anyways, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up. Like I said, World War II Schluters. Um, definitely comment, you know, share me uh, with me what you think and give me some advice or tips on maybe some other kind of videos y'all like to see me make in the future. Um, please like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll be getting back to you. Thanks a lot.